Welcome to hypercoagulable states. In this video, we will focus on paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. In the next few minutes, we will discuss the following take-home points. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is caused by a mutation in the pig A gene, which leads to a loss of GPI-anchored proteins. The hallmarks of this disease are hemolytic anemia, aplastic anemia, and unusual thromboses. The primary therapy is complement inhibition. Let's discuss the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria stem cell. We begin with a group of multipotent hematopoietic stem cells. In paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, one of these stem cells acquires a somatic mutation that allows the cell to survive, expand, and self-renew in a process known as clonal expansion. In PNH, this mutation occurs in the phosphatidyl inositol glycan anchor biosynthesis class A gene, also known as the pig A gene. The pig A gene is responsible for the first step in the synthesis of glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol, or GPI anchor, that attaches a subset of proteins to the cell's surface, including red cell membrane protein CD55 and CD59. Both work to inactivate complement on the red cell surface. With the loss of glycophosphatidyl inositol, the anchored proteins are deficient and this leads to complement-mediated red cell lysis. Complement-mediated lysis occurs more readily at lower pH levels, which typically occurs overnight, resulting in morning hemoglobinuria manifesting as dark-colored red, brown, or black urine. Let's review the clinical manifestations. As expected, the complement-mediated red cell lysis results in a Coombs-negative or non-immune hemolytic anemia, which can present clinically with fatigue, hemoglobinuria, and jaundice. Other common disease manifestations include thrombosis, which most commonly presents as venous thrombosis. However, the complement activation drives the occurrence of thrombosis in unusual locations, including abdominal thrombosis that may manifest as the Bud Chiari syndrome. Patients also experience cerebral vein thrombosis, and some patients will develop dermal vein thrombosis. Other clinical findings include pancytopenia, which may be due to aplastic anemia or myelodysplastic syndrome. Some patients will experience progression to acute leukemia. Let's briefly discuss expected laboratory findings. These include findings of hemolysis, as demonstrated by elevated LDH, hyperbilirubinemia, decreased haptoglobin, a negative Coombs test, reticulocytosis, and increased free serum hemoglobin. A subset of patients will have iron deficiency anemia. Definitive diagnosis is made by flow cytometry, which detects deficiency of CD55 and CD59 on the surface of peripheral erythrocytes or leukocytes. Finally, let's touch briefly on management. The primary treatment strategy is complement inhibition with a complement inhibitor such as ecolizumab. For chronic hemolysis, Folate supplementation is recommended. In summary, PNH is caused by a mutation in the pig A gene, which results in the loss of GPI anchored proteins CD55 and CD59. The hallmarks of disease are hemolytic anemia, aplastic anemia, and unusual thromboses. The primary treatment modality is complement inhibition. This ends the video on hypercoagulable states, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria.